Hey fellow Lolitas, thanks for tuning in to another Elivira original video. So if you've been into Lolita fashion for even a minute, I'm sure you are familiar with the term dream dress. Everybody's got at least one dream dress. Or if they don't, they've got an incredible robust wardrobe that has every single thing they could ever want in this fashion. Dream dress describes not only a dress that you really, really want and have wanted for a long time and are actively seeking out but also one that you would pay pretty much any amount to own in your preferred size, color, style, etc. I'm very lucky to say that over time my list of dream dresses has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. Most of my dream dresses now are just the colors of Gingham Shuring by AP that I don't have and a couple of specific Hey Newly dresses in sizes that would fit me. They're just dresses that I missed out on, whether due to financial stuff or the timing wasn't right or I prioritized other dresses when I had the opportunity to get these dresses and it's always haunted me that I didn't just spend the extra money to get these dresses when I had the chance. But once in a blue moon, you find your dream dress online. Finding your dream dress out in the wild is just an incredible feeling and finally getting your hands on it is just one of those Lolita experiences that I wish for every single person in this fashion. So recently I did a major closet cleaning live stream and I wound up letting go of a lot of pieces that I didn't expect to just because they didn't fit me anymore or it wasn't love for me. And the for sale pile happened to include the Hey Newly Just One Bite JSK in chiffon with the corset top and the removable straps. And as it happened to turn out, that was somebody's dream dress. And the person who I sold it to told me how excited they were to be finally getting their dream dress. And I'd never worn the dress. I'd been keeping it hung up in my closet untouched all these years. So when they got it, it was new with tag and that is a really rare and wonderful experience. I've definitely found my dream dresses new with tag before. I got Haley Lee's Starlight of Serenity OP shortly before Hanukkah of last year, which was new with tag, though some of the items in the set had been worn. I got the blue Gingham Shuring JS Cave, which I was wearing in my Lilia Bull or Not video for my Dorothy coordinate, and that was new with tag, which was really mind-blowing, so the Shuring was in perfect condition too. But I guess lightning has struck again for me just a couple of weeks ago, I was able to find another one of my dream dresses in new with tag condition, but this one was even more pristine. Behold, the Saint Vitus JSK by Hey Nuli. Saint Vitus, Saint Vitus, Vitus, Vitus. That JSK. <laughs> Anyway, this JSK was one of the ones that I had just let slip through my fingers. It was available during the farewell sales that Hey Newly was doing right before they shut their brand down. And it's got this stained glass imagery, which I thought was so beautiful, but ultimately made me a little weary because I am Jewish. And so the idea of wearing something that was like very churchy was a little weird to me. But while the print is very, very church-like, the actual art doesn't include big glaring obvious crosses and the fact that I thought it might have a bunch of crosses on it was what made me shy away from buying it in the first place but look at this thing look at it and it's never been taken out of the package it's in my preferred colorway it's in my preferred size and although I did pay more than this dress was originally listed for to get it for the condition and for the rarity of this piece I think I paid a pretty good price so today I guess I'm kind of unboxing a dream dress but a dress that should not exist in this condition but somehow does and I am the lucky one who gets to open this package and enjoy this dress in its perfect condition unless of course it turns out not to fit me which would be a huge bummer but at least it will still be new with tag and I'm sure there is somebody else out there for whom this is their dream dress so let's give this baby a look-see let's open it up and just admire the incredible craftsmanship that comes with Hey Newly's older pieces and see where we go from there. So this ribbon just fell out of the package. We'll see what that goes to later. And the straps actually came undone to start with. That's very interesting, but convenient because I'm gonna have to adjust these straps to be on the longest strap point anyway. 
I think the strangest thing to me is that this dress seems kind of slightly perfumed. Like, it smells rosy. I've never experienced that with a brand new dress before, and I would worry that it had been laundered, but I mean, we saw it come out of the package. And indeed, here is the tag still attached. So I assume the person who listed this wasn't scamming me. Mm, unfortunately, it does look like there is some sort of residual markings around where the button holes were sewn in on these straps. There's just a couple of like little dark markings that you can see and it's really obvious because this dress is pure white. But I'm not too devastated because it's gonna be on the back anyway. Wow, that is so pretty. Ah, what? This dress has a stain on it. I can't believe this. This dress has a stain on it. Wow, how, how could this have happened? It smells like it's been laundered and it's got a tiny stain on the front. Food staining perhaps? Time to look this baby over with a magnifying glass. Yep, there's another little mark on this part of the skirt right here. I believe these ribbons are meant to be woven through the lace over here on the front of the bodice. I do get the impression that if this was worn before by somebody, they didn't wear all of the pieces of it. Let's take a closer look at the back of the dress. There are a lot of little stray threads, which could be from manufacturing, but might not be. Ah! Here on the back, are you seeing what I'm seeing? There are marks on the back too. There are little lines. Okay, well, I've looked it all over and it seems like those three marks are the only issue present on this dress, but that many issues for a brand dress, new and original packaging is really weird and suspicious. Y'all, this is not the video I set out to make, let me tell you. Now, I bought this dress back in September and when I got it, I immediately left positive feedback after I confirmed that this was new in package and then I saved it and put it on my pile until I could open it. This has caused me a lot of problems and I think I need to stop saving things like this because now I don't think I have any recourse. I suppose there is the possibility that this dress was somehow packaged badly or that these marks were from the factory. For example, this is a factory flaw. This is an artifact of having marked a place on the strap with a dark pencil and it may just wash out. But for this little orange speck to be right in the middle of the first fold of the skirt, this makes me think that somebody might have worn this, dropped something on their lap while they were eating, washed the dress or had it dry cleaned, and then reattached the tags and put it back in the original packaging. Looking at the tag itself, it does seem a little bit bent. I don't think this is out of the realm of what you could expect from just getting something shipped to you. But looking at the way the tags are attached, it is attached on a safety pin. Y'all, this is just really weird. I was going to do a try on and possibly three chord video with this, but I don't think that's really in the cards for me anymore. I'm definitely not going to wear it until whatever is going on here is resolved. I think my next step is going to have to be going on some Lolita.com forums. Maybe I will ask the big sisters of Lolita fashion for people who have this dress in this colorway and see if they had similar experiences when they unboxed theirs. Now this dress was last released in 2019, so chances are pretty good that if I just ask around online, I could find somebody else who remembers opening theirs up and seeing if they had any sort of similar experience with having found stains on it straight out of the package, and whether or not the JSK had any sort of smell associated with it. At this point, I'm not really sure if there's anything I can do on Lace Market. If it turns out I was scammed, I might reach out to the seller and ask them some questions, but I think it's going to be very hard to prove anything here. The best I can do might just be to edit my feedback if it seems like they're being dishonest, but I also don't want to jump to conclusions and accuse somebody of being dishonest, especially since I know that I do have a platform and therefore some influence within the community. I don't want to send anybody after this person willy-nilly, regardless of the outcome, whether or not this is a common problem that I'm just now finding out about, or if this person did scam me, whether or not I get a refund, stuff like that. I do want to keep this dress. I do want to wear this dress. And to be honest, I still would have bought this dress in this condition if the damage had been disclosed and the price had reflected 
collected that amount of damage. I paid for what I thought was brand new with tag in packaging, and if this turns out to have been a scam, I'm going to be very upset. As a rule of thumb, I don't remove my tags unless I have to in order to try something on. For example, when I tried on my Angelic Pretty Freshly Picked Strawberries set, I left the tag on the headband and the dress when I did my try on, but I had to remove it from the socks because that would have impeded me from being able to try on the socks. If you remove the tag and you wear a dress and you wash it and then you reapply the tag, do not call it new with tags. Call it like new with tags if there's no damage to it. And if there are damages, just disclose it. There's no reason somebody isn't gonna still wanna buy your dress. They just might not wanna pay what you think it's worth. And for the record, you don't have to sell your dress for less than you think it's worth. Basically, an item will only ever be worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. And that all has to be dependent on honest disclosure of condition. So please be as specific as possible whenever possible. I guess that's it for me today as far as filming goes. And I'm gonna ask around online to see what I can find out about this dress. And uh, yeah, I guess future me will be back with part two of this video talking about what I found out. Okay, these last few days have been an absolute emotional roller coaster, and I'm very happy to report that the story does have a happy ending, but after what I just went through, what the seller just went through, and what Nunu, the owner and designer behind Hainuli, just went through, I feel like I need to give a little bit more explanation than just the resolution of this, so stay tuned, it is a wild ride. I made the post basically right after I filmed the first half of this video. I was very in my feelings. I wasn't thinking entirely rationally. And after 24 hours had passed and it hadn't been approved by the mods, I decided I was just going to reach out to the seller and try to confront them directly instead because I was convinced that they were trying to scam me. So I explained the issues to the seller. One, the dress was perfumey and I suspected that they had washed it and reattached the tags. Two, that the front lace ribbons were missing, which was further proof that they had gotten lost lost somehow in the washing process. And three, there were stains on the dress which the washing process had not removed. Again, I thought that some sort of information was being withheld. I thought that the seller had intentionally misled me and that even if the dress was brand new and had only been hanging in a closet or something, the fact that it had been labeled never opened before had obviously been a lie. So I asked them for a partial refund so that I could get some of the money back. And I based the refund request amount on a a couple of different factors, what other dresses of this release had sold for recently. Also more generally, some sale prices for Hey Newly dresses that had slight damages, such as stains and missing items. And then I waited. And if any of you watching have ever gone through a similar experience, I'm sure you can relate to that feeling of just stewing in the unknown. On the one hand, you're so worried that the seller is this malicious evil person trying to scam you out of money and they're just going to lie and mislead you and they're gonna drag you down with them and leave you bad feedback if you so much as challenge them on anything. And on the other hand, you're thinking, okay, do I need to escalate this to PayPal? What if I'm gonna be out hundreds of dollars? It's stressful. So my stewing continued and eventually my post on Big Sisters of Voluta Fashion did get approved by the mods. All of the responses were pretty much the same regardless of the experience level of the person who responded. They all said that the first thing I should do is reach out to the seller, which I already had done, and that I should request a partial refund. A lot of people seem to think that maybe something shady had gone down, but they were also way more invested and way more sleuthy than I ever would have imagined. Lace Market username, and platforms like Facebook and Discord and LiveJournal and all of those things, they all have some level of anonymity built into them. And it literally never crossed my mind that anybody would take it upon themselves to look up the listing that I was talking about, dig through the seller's terms of service and try to make suppositions on my behalf. And the second that happened, I felt 
awful, like a different level of awful. Because I still hadn't heard the seller's side of the story, I still had no idea what was going on, I was still very emotional, and I didn't think that I'd posted enough identifying information for anyone to like figure out who I was on Lace Market or draw a connection between this YouTube channel and my real name on Facebook, but boy was I wrong. <laughs> Lolitas are a sleuthy and uh, nosy and determined bunch and everyone was trying to be super helpful and I immediately feel like I compromised somebody else's privacy and I felt so guilty and I really regret doing that. So the next thing that happened basically made my stomach turn over another 10 times. Almost in exact unison, I got a message back from the seller and a direct message on Facebook from Hey Newly herself, Nunu and I was just kind of shocked. I was checking my Facebook messages first, so I read Nunu's message first. Nunu very helpfully explained via DM that she was going to take ownership of the fact that this dress had come without ribbons. She explained that part of the farewell reservation involved all of these dresses having the ribbons laced in by hand and that there was a chance that something was missed. And she even offered to contact the original manufacturer of those ribbons to get some and have it sent to me personally to rectify the situation. So basically, three years after she sold the item to a different person, she went ahead and gave me the very best example of customer service that I could ever fathom or imagine to try and make this situation right again. I also read the seller's message. She said that she had reached out to Hai Newly directly to ask about it because she was also extremely confused as to what was going on. Turns out that Hai Newly's white dresses sometimes have little flaws associated with them. A disclaimer about these flaws was in their terms of service and that was all fine, but the ribbons were definitely an oversight. And so the seller got Hey Newly to get in touch with me over Facebook. She commented on the Facebook post. The seller also pointed out that there was a little spot in her terms of service about the way she stores her items in a closet, which does have some sort of air purification system, which is slightly scented. To be fair, I don't really mind scented items. I did see that in her terms of service, I always read terms of service, but for some reason my brain jumped to the assumption that because this was new in packaging, it wouldn't have been affected by this. Like, it probably wasn't stored in the closet with the rest of her clothes. That was just wrong. That was on me completely. And having the dress out for a couple of days, the smell has completely dissipated. It's a non-issue at this point. But when I opened the dress, I was just so convinced that it was proof of malicious intent and obfuscation of of wearing the dress and all this other stuff. And y'all, I just feel so ridiculous. I feel guilty that I accused somebody of being dishonest to me. I feel guilty that I didn't think that talking about it in a public place might somehow get back to them, which I should have known better. I feel bad that I newly had to deal with this after all these years and stepping away from her brand and refocusing on other things. And of course, I also feel bad that I did pay more than the original retail price for this dress, even though it did end up having issues. But feeling bad about that is a me problem. Making other people feel bad is the absolute worst nightmare scenario for me. I never ever want to cause trouble for anybody else in this community. And you know, I've been on the other side of things too, right? Like I sell things all the time and as careful as I am, there have been times when a buyer has come to me with an issue about the condition of a dress and that sinking feeling you feel when you think you're gonna get negative feedback or when they're gonna do a chargeback for a really expensive item. It's just, it's awful. And I don't wish that on anybody. Basically, I didn't think it would be enough to just come on here and say, oh, whoops, it was a manufacturer error, no harm done, blah, 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 and just leave it at that. Because I want there to be a moral to this story. I want all of the stress that I went through and that this seller went through and that Nunu went through to mean something. And I don't know how to make sense of that. But uh, yeah, excuse me for just a minute while I get on my soapbox and talk a little bit just about what I learned from this experience. 
experience and what I would like to see come out of this experience for the whole community. Number one, vague booking probably should be avoided. Try to obscure the information that you use to try to get advice from other Lolitas. This is a very small niche community. Personally, I'm going to pledge to be more responsible. I'm hardly active in online spaces outside of this YouTube channel and a little bit of posting on Instagram and occasionally posting on like Closet of Frills or in the plus size Lolita discords or whatever. But this sort of super small, tight knit, gossipy culture from our community, it's exactly what caused me to distance myself from my local community in the first place. I haven't really talked about it on this channel before, but at one point when I was studying abroad in Japan, I bought a bunch of very kawaii border print fabrics and I went on CGL and I posted a photo of the fabric asking for advice on where I could find patterns and stuff. One of the Anons on there called me by my actual legal name as it was on Facebook. They called me Ida and they told me not to attempt anything because it would be horrible. And it took me years to want to go to a meetup after that because all I could think was the only people who would know me through Facebook and the Facebook name that I was using are people that met me through meetups. And that really scared me. The community had been so nice to my face and so shady behind my back. And there are drama forums and secret posting venues all over for this fashion. And it's creepy and it bugs me. And I don't look at them, but I still hear about stuff that happens on there all the time. And I hear about it when I'm posted on there. And it just makes me absolutely sick to think that I may have exposed somebody due to a misunderstanding to that kind of criticism. And that sucks. The other thing is that I have this massive pile of boxes that I have just not been able to get through. I've been trying so hard to save things and not just unbox them because I want to make content for all of y'all and I want people to learn through my experiences and I want to capture my unfettered, unbiased, like unfiltered joy and or horror on my channel. I think it's one of the reasons a lot of y'all stick around. You like the way I talk about things, but the longer things sit on my pile, the more I open myself up to not being able to address issues that there might be with the garments. Let's see back here. I got two Taobao boxes, two Meta boxes, a bunch of blouses, a chocolate bunny store package, and uh, yes, one more Taobao thing. All of these things I have not gone through yet because I've been saving them. And at this point, some of those things, if they had issues, I would just be SOL. I'd be out of the 180 day window for or PayPal chargebacks on some of these things. And especially when you get something secondhand, you really need to go over it immediately. In this case, the seller says that she should have opened up the dress and gone over it herself when she got it back in 2019 or early 2020. I can't blame her for that. I've been doing the same thing. I got blouses and stuff right here. I haven't opened it all. I got all sorts of stuff. Like this is, this is getting ridiculous. But another thing I learned through this experience is that I'm not talking into a vacuum. People from the brands that I am talking about watch this channel. I know that because Atelier Piero changed their Japanese website to include an international website link. I know that because Nunu herself told me via DM that she liked watching my unboxing video for the Wandering Spirit JSK and that she shared it with her family and that they all liked me. And I know it because sometimes when I post on Instagram with all of my different wacky cords and my various meta dresses, the meta brand Instagram will like the post. And that's not even accounting for the much smaller brands owned by sole proprietors who pour their hearts and souls into everything they do. I'm so passionate about this and I'm just so grateful that I have been given a platform where people actually care about my opinion. My experience is not what comes to mind when people talk about influencers, but I think I actually have an influence. And I'm gonna be a lot more thoughtful from now on about how I use that influence. Because whether it is a dress from Taobao or something that I got secondhand that is 12 years old, it doesn't matter. Lolita clothing and fashion is an art form. And it's an art form that I'm essentially critiquing on a daily basis on this channel. And I just need to remind myself that there are actual people whose artistic point of view is 
represented by every single piece that I wear. And that's very special. And it's something that I should take seriously. So yes, I do think this story has a happy ending. I do still feel like I spent a little too much money on this dress, but that is entirely my own fault. The thing about the Lolita secondhand market is that as long as somebody is willing to pay the price for a listed item, that is what that item is worth. And this dress was new in bag, flawed or not, and I was willing to pay what I paid for it, and that is on me, and it is no one else's fault. And that's capitalism, baby. Now that I know that the stains on this dress were direct from the manufacturer and not something that somebody's already tried to wash out and done a poor job at, I'm actually much more confident that I will be able to get them taken care of either through professional dry cleaning or through my own methods. So I will be having a go at that on my own. And once Nunu sends me the ribbons that go on the front of this dress, which again, she did not have to do. She is going out of her way to make things right and I cannot sing her praises enough or her brands. I'm still sort of secretly, not so secretly praying that she will enjoy her married life but also find a way to keep making dresses. She is just a once in a generation talent as far as I'm concerned. She is the goat, greatest of all time. But anyway, once I have those ribbons in hand and this dress is once again complete and hopefully stain free, I will eventually be doing a three coordinate video for this dress because this dress is so beautiful. It absolutely deserves it, and I love it. I love you even if you are a little damaged and a little weird. I mean, I've got damage and weird spots too. I really, I really can't judge this dress for having them. <laughs> so before I go, I just wanna say one more time that I believe that we are a global community and we should all strive to be excellent to each other always. We're all just a bunch of frilly weirdos trying to make it through our lives and eke out the little bits of joy that come from this fashion as we can get them. So let's try to trust each other and let's try to give each other the benefit of the doubt and let's just try to lift each other up. We all need a little less anxiety in our lives and a little more joy. And that's why we all do Lolita. At least that's why I do it. Well, this was quite a story. If you have any stories about being scammed or thinking you were scammed, but you weren't really, or interesting experiences you've had with customer service after you got a dress that was defaulty from the manufacturer, drop them in the comments comments below, I guess, because you don't have a three coordinate lineup to choose a favorite from, so I don't know, I gotta do something for engagement. I'm guessing this video is going to get a lot of hate, but that is okay. Feel free to leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, however you're feeling. I don't like this video, but I made it anyway, so yay, it's out! <laughs> and I feel weird about asking you to subscribe after this too, but I will still ask you to subscribe, because it's one of those things that they tell you you're supposed to do as a YouTuber. I've been Ellie Vi I am a very embarrassed, plus size tall, and swole Lolita, and I really appreciate you watching this video all the way till the end. All right, I'm gonna go comfort myself with some junk food. Bye!